So far, Camille has done a masterful job of eliciting the story of what TMZ learned from Amber Heard without directly implicating her or indeed the actual source of that information. In this next section, we're going to watch as Camille uses this technique to demonstrate through the power of the inference that Amber Heard has lied under oath. Let's take a look. After August 6, 2016, were you involved in any other stories involving Ms. Heard? Yes, I was. And what story was that? Um, on the 12th, we received a video um, depicting um, Johnny Depp um, slamming some cabinets that was captured by Ms. Heard. And what day was that? I believe that was the t August 12th. Of 2016? Of 2016, yes. Can you describe to the jury how you received the video on August 12th, 2016? Yes, the video was sent in through our email tip line, which is uh, an email distribution that goes to all the producers and to myself as the field assignment manager because it often included celebrity locations. The It came in as, as I recall, a... Objection, just, hearsay. He's just describing how it came in. He's, I think he's about to reveal hearsay, Your Honor. Uh, I'll overrule for now. We'll see where it goes. Okay. Elaine continues to see that damage is being done and she tries to intervene, but there's nothing objectionable about what Camille has been asking. She has continued to stick with this very disciplined, very solid structure of what did TMZ do? What actions did you take? And as a result of those actions, what information came into your possession? She can see that they are in a danger zone here, but she just doesn't have the ability to stop the train at this point. She can see it coming, but uh, she's just staring at the headlight as it gets closer and closer. Better get off the tracks, Elaine. Please continue. So I received that email and it included a link from some unknown Dropbox type um, uh, public uh, website in which it contained Objection, that video. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. He's about to describe what's, what comes from the Dropbox website and that's... So far as you said, he's, uh, was a link from a Dropbox. We'll see the next question. Go ahead, next question. So you received a link. What was in that link? In that link was the video of Johnny Depp smashing the cabinets. I really like how it looks like he's looking at Amber Heard or Elaine over there very directly in the link was the video. This is just kind of rubbing in how Elaine, I guess, thought that the, the Dropbox was going to have, I don't know, a communication of some type, some words, some information, maybe a name that was written down, but none of that is necessary. Uh, it's just the video itself. And we're going to see using the same technique, how Camille is going to be able to elicit through inference who that video came from. And that is how she is able to completely avoid these objections by Elaine that just continue to fail at uh, really accomplishing anything at all. Okay. And you received this video in your inbox, correct? I did. Okay. What did you do once you received that video? Um, we downloaded it. We, we alerted the web editor who was sitting next to me at the time. Um, we downloaded it and then were instructed by the uh, news producer to do what we call slap um, bumpers and a bug on it, which is putting the dun 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 at the beginning end and then uh, putting a uh, translucent watermark over it, which indicates copyright ownership. 
Now I did notice a quick glance towards Elaine from Morgan at this point, And I wonder if it's because he did notice that he was about to get into some hearsay. This is an opportunity where Elaine could have objected, uh, but she she just didn't. And that's when she goes into what, when, when Morgan Tremaine goes into what the producer instructed him to do. The producer's instructions, those are hearsay, statements made to him outside of court. So that is a situation where had Elaine been a little bit on the ball or maybe caught that tell, that little slight tell that, that uh, Morgan Tremaine gave her, uh, she might have been able to score on that one and s sort of cut off that conclusion he was able to get to that by placing the watermark on the video, TMZ was signifying that they owned the copyright. That's gonna be a very important part of the inferential step that leads to the conclusion that therefore the copyright came from Amber Heard. After you did that, was it posted? It was posted, yes. Where was it posted? It was posted to TMZ.com. Did you do anything else related to Amber Heard on August 12, 2016? Um, yes, I received a tip that Amber Heard would be arriving at LAX, and so I dispatched camera people to uh, film that exit, or her, um, her arrival to LAX, rather. And why did you do that? Um, I was instructed to. How long does it take to post a story after media has been received by TMZ? After media has been received, um, it could take any length of time depending on who owns the copyright. How does TMZ obtain copyright over images and videos? Um, the only way to obtain copyright over media would be if we shot it ourselves, if it was sent to the tip line, source verified that it was from the original copyright owner, and then either purchased from that person or given to us, and then the third option would be if it was directly given to us by the copyright holder, like a direct source. And how long does it take to copyright something TMC has received through the tip line? Uh, it can take a while because you have to extensively verify that that person owns the copyright. And then possibly, it, it depends also if they, you can even get in contact with the person because they might not be super responsive immediately um, via phone or email that they provided. And then potentially you'd have to enter a negotiation with our clips and clearances department to uh, figure out the cost of that media. How long does it take for TMZ to obtain a copyright or something received directly from a source? Something in the realm of 15 minutes just to do what I described before, which is putting bumpers and a bug on something and write the article and post it. It's pretty fast. How much time had passed from the time you received the kitchen cabinet video to the time it was posted on TMZ? About 15 minutes. Genius. This is genius. This is such a good strategy by Camille. Uh, nothing in it, notice no objection. There was simply no avenue, no opening that she gave for Elaine to be able to come in and try to interrupt this train <laughs> that is coming <laughs> for Amber Heard's explanation of the kitchen cabinet video. Elaine sets up this distinction between, on the one hand, you get a video through the link and you have to go through an extensive process to be able to verify it because you have to obtain the copyright, ensure that it's from the right person, etc. As opposed to when you obtain it directly from the source, who he's already told us is the person who is the copyright holder. In that situation, you don't have to go through that whole verification process, so it can be done very quickly. Which one of these applies? Camille has just allowed us to see the entire process of what unfolded here without having to directly ask a single question. She didn't have to ask, did you get this video from Amber Heard? 
because she's able to tell that story through the different ways that TMZ does things and the significance of what that means. Therefore, in this particular case, the way that they received it is indicative of receiving it directly from the source. She doesn't need to ask that final question, was that source Amber Heard? Because the jury is able to reach that conclusion on their own. Such a powerful use of inferential storytelling that Camille has accomplished here. Did any other tabloids other than TMZ post this video? Objection no, they leading and it calls for hearsay. Did any other tabloids? Over, over, over. Mr. Tremaine, go ahead. No, they did not. And why not? Um, because it was a TMZ exclusive. And what does that mean? It means the TMZ owns the copyright to it. <laughs> and there we just get it out in plain overt terms. It means TMZ owns the copyright to it. TMZ acquired the copyright from the source, which he's already told us it's either given or we bought it. So the jury is going to be able to figure out what that means. So it can't be distributed by any other media source without backlinking to TMZ and they wouldn't be able to upload that media without uh, getting a copyright strike. Have you seen the kitchen cabinet video that was played in this trial? I have, yes. How does that video that was played in this trial compare to the one you received on August 12, 2016? Um, when I had clicked the direct link that we received and watched the video in its entirety, it was much shorter than the video we had received uh, than the video that's been played in this trial. There was some a bit at the beginning that was played here in which Ms. Heard is um, seemingly sort of sitting at the camera and getting into position. And then there's a bit at the end where she's seemingly snickering and looks at the camera. That part was not present in what we received. Did TMZ edit the video? No, not even a little. When we receive something and it's edited, there's a clear indicator because there's a, sort of a journalistic practice that uses um, when there's an edit, you do what's called a, like a white flash transition, which covers the entire screen with white to very clearly indicate to everybody there was an edit here for time or whatever, um, just for to make it a little more compelling. But in this case, it was not edited um, as I was staring at the machine that edited it and present for the entirety of receipt to publishing. When was the next time you worked on an assignment related to Amber Heard? Um, it was, well, uh, there was the, the time where we went to the airport. And then the day after that, because um, she had flown in for the deposition, because I, I think the first time didn't work out. Um, so she was arriving again for the deposition in that same um, parking lot adjacent to a, um, a law office. And what's that, August 13th, 2016? That was August 13th, yeah. And what was your assignment on August 13th, 2016? Uh, to dispatch camera people to that parking lot at a specific time in order to film Amber Heard arriving for the deposition. How did you know that tip was legitimate? Uh, it came from a news producer. While you worked at TMZ, did you ever receive any communications from Mr. Depp or his camp? I did not. Nothing further, Your Honor. Cross examination. I love how Camille set up that conclusion with the distinction between all of the information that was received related to Amber Heard, information that was productive for TMZ, information that indicated that their source was accurate, reliable, owned the copyright of the information, the, the digital media that they were providing, and then drawing that harsh distinction with Johnny Depp's team. Very explicitly, she had told this whole story of Amber Heard through what TMZ did, not who did you talk to. But now here at the very end, she switches gears in order to draw that distinction and to make it crystal clear that TMZ had never spoken to Team Depp, never worked with them. They were not a source. Very, very powerful by Camille. So Elaine is about to get into her cross-examination and 
As with Camille, it's now day 22. Uh, she's learned a few things by this point, uh, but just still seems to be chronically unable to get out of her own way and really exercise the type of disciplined control over the witness that she really needs to have with somebody like Morgan, who is sharp, clearly very intelligent, very articulate. Uh, once again, this is just a dangerous witness that she gets careless with her handling. Let's go ahead and enjoy that. Yes. Uh, so how do you know what video was shown at this trial? Um, I was alerted by a friend that, um, that TMZ was being kind of talked about in this trial. And so I had seen a clip of that. Okay. So you watched some of this trial? Correct. Okay. When did you first reach out to counsel for Mr. Depp? Um, I believe that was six days ago, whatever that date would be. I'd have to do that. All right. And then <laughs> I love how Elaine is really trying to elicit something damaging here, some type of implication that either Morgan Tremaine or Team Depp is cheating or playing dirty or, or something like that. But again, she doesn't know the answers to the questions that she's asking. So there doesn't, there's nothing certainly illegal about Morgan Tremaine not knowing that he was going to be a witness subject to the court's exclusion order watching portions of the trial. So that question kind of fall flat, fell flat. Yes, he saw a part of the trial, doesn't really matter. And then shifting gears to try to suggest that somehow this was like coordinated with Team Depp or, or planned or something like that, but gets this very direct answer six days ago <laughs> that we first got in contact. So nothing like the kind of, uh, I don't know, elaborate scheme, I guess, Elaine thought she was going to be able to uncover here with these questions. Uh, no, Morgan Tremaine has a consistent story. He heard about TMZ being featured in the trial, so he contacted Team Depp, and that led to him being where he is here. He's now communicated that clearly, and it might have been prudent for Elaine to just go ahead and accept that. And then if she had some type of valid impeachment or other information to elicit from him to spend her cross-examination focusing on that. But instead, she just continues to make a lot of the same mistakes, albeit in a shorter period of time, that she's made throughout this trial. She just doesn't know when to stop trying to push for an answer that she's not going to get. And the result is she gets an answer that she really doesn't want. And you received a subpoena, I think yesterday, in care of your attorney, Cindy Hickox, right? Correct. Okay. And Cindy Hickox represents Christy Dombrowski, Kate James, Robin Baum. Objection, Your Honor. Were you aware Calls of that? for speculation. O overruled. That is just an example of one beef that I have had with Team Depp throughout this trial, which is that the correct objection is one that I don't believe we heard them use a single time in this entire six weeks. And that is objection assumes facts, not in evidence. This is the classic example of Elaine testifying. She is offering information about who represented who that nobody has testified to. She's not a witness. She doesn't get to present that information to the jury. Now, if she were to phrase this in a way such as, did you know that this attorney was representing so-and-so-and-so-and-so-and-so-and-so, it's a little bit closer to being acceptable. It still is assuming facts not in evidence, but because it's just asking if that's information that Morgan Tremaine had, it would likely be 
considered above board. Uh, but this particular question of just flat out asserting that this is an attorney-client relationship between these people, that, that that relationship existed, that's not something Elaine is supposed to be allowed to do. Uh, but it wasn't the correct objection for them to be making on that particular issue, so they lost it and that question gets to stand. Were you aware of that? No. Okay. Now, if you don't have information that's helpful to this case, then you wouldn't be a witness, correct? Objection. Uh, calls for speculation. Yeah. Sustained. I'm, sustained. Next question. I'm not aware. Right. Okay. You know this. You know this case is being televised, right? I, I am aware that there are cameras. And so this gets you your 15 minutes of fame. Doesn't Objection, it? Your Honor. Argumentative. I I can ask that question. Oh, ruled. Um. So I stand to gain nothing from this. I'm actually putting myself kind of in the target of TMZ, a very litigious uh, organization. And I'm not seeking any 15 minutes here. Though you may, you're welcome to speculate. I could say the same thing by taking Amber Heard as a client for you. A little argumentative, don't you think? Oh, hardly. I find that to be purely logical. Thank you. Everyone had such a good time with that answer. We saw Ben Chu having a great time. We saw a DUI guy in the background having a great time. Even Morgan Tremaine has a, a, a little smile on his face as, as he delivers that. Um, Touche, Elaine. Uh, you want to talk about 15 minutes of fame and uh, who is boosting their profile on the back of accusations against Johnny Depp? Yeah, you know, maybe you uh, maybe you should have thought that one through a little bit more carefully. Um, you know, if you had a little better insight into your own role in how in in all of that and in how the rest of the world perceives you, considering how you have conducted yourself throughout the course of this case, then maybe you would have seen that one coming. Um, but that was a great clap back by Morgan Tremaine. Obviously, that was one of the big moments in this trial that got a lot of attention, got a lot of excitement. Um, from a substantive standpoint, of course, it's really nothing. I mean, it's nowhere near as powerful as the information that he has already told us. But just being able to get in that dig that everybody has kind of wanted to see um, deflecting her attack and turning it right back on her, hoisting her on her own petard was very satisfying. I'm glad we got to share that. Now, are you aware that Mr. Depp's attorneys were well aware of the TRO that was going to be presented on May 27? Objection, calls for speculation. Were you aware of that? Lack of foundation. No, overruled if you can answer it. Once again, assumes facts not in evidence. Now, by shifting her questioning to were you aware of that, um, that is helping to alleviate that problem with that particular question because now again, she's just asking what Morgan Tremaine knows. It doesn't mean that it's true. Uh, if he does know it, then that would establish it as fact. But if he doesn't know it, uh, he just doesn't know it. It's not established one way or the other. So just once again, little gripe that I have, wrong objection, wish they would have gone with the right one, but at the end of the day, it really isn't going to matter. Can you restate the question? Were you understand. aware that Mr. Depp's divorce attorneys were aware that Amber Heard was going in to seek a TRO on May 27? I don't think I understand the question, but I don't think so, no. Okay. It's Do kind of a complicated question. Do you know question. whether Blair Burke, one of Mr. Depp's Divorce attorneys has a very close, had a very close relationship with TMZ at that time. Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. If he knows. Uh, I was not aware of that. Okay. And when you said that you were dispatched twice, once to film Amber for in a parking lot for the deposition, and then it didn't work out, and so you had to do it another time, how did you know it didn't work out? Because TMZ.com posted an article saying as much. Okay. And I, I was not dispatched. Do you know I in the why office. the deposition did not work out? 
I'd have to reference the article. I forget. So, so do you? Know, I, I didn't write that story. I wasn't involved in the actual you know journalism of that. Which side? Do you know which side would have known or not known whether that deposition was going to work out? Elaine is trying so hard to do what Camille has just accomplished so skillfully of being able to draw inferences out of the witness in order to be able to say things over, uh, implicitly that she wouldn't be able to get out overtly. But the problem is that these inferences aren't really necessary to be drawn. Uh, she doesn't know, apparently, what Morgan Tremaine has to say. Uh, I would assume that she would have had the opportunity to interview him at the very least before he did get on the stand. And so she probably should have known what he was going to say in response to these types of questions. But Judging by his confusion and Elaine's inability to really establish anything of substance here, it really looks like she's winging it. Um, so either she did interview him and she just asked him other things and is now making this up, or she didn't interview him and is operating completely on the fly just based on what he said on the stand. This is a poor approach to cross-examination. Uh, probably goes without saying, you know, preparation tends to be helpful when it comes to uh, knowing what's going on, what your objective is, and, and how to get there. And it's having the result of just making her look like she's flailing because she doesn't know what answer she's going to get once again, she doesn't have the ability to pin him down with anything. She's just having to rely on her own assertions of things that may or may not be true, haven't been established by any other witness. And if Morgan Tremaine contradicts her, she has no ability to be able to show that he is incorrect. So the jury is left with his answer and given how he has presented so far and the credibility that he has shown, they really don't have a reason to question his version of events. In other words, the people representing Mr. Depp or the people representing Ms. Hurd? I wouldn't know. Okay. Um, and then the video clip. Um, you don't know who provided that, correct? Correct. Okay. Not testifying to that. I have no further. All right. Redirect. Mr. Tremaine, why did you contact me <laughs> in relation to this case? Um, I saw that there was a discrepancy with like the video that was shown here and the video that I know I had received. So I, I had no interest in testifying. It was I had reached out simply to maybe try to help with the timeline of things or or help with the case in any way just by virtue of, of understanding the timeline of the stories that were published and kind of how that can be unclear. Um, but I had no idea I'd be on the stand. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you. All right, sir, you're free to go. Thank, Thank you. you. And so there we see the remarkable difference between day 22 of trial and the early stages with that one question redirect. Um, first off, Elaine's finish was relatively strong. Quite frankly, it's the only point she had to make for the entire cross-examination. So from my perspective, her cross-examination would have been much stronger had it consisted of that single question. You don't actually know who provided the video, correct? Yes. At the end of the day, that's going to be the best she can do with this information. She can't, she can't establish who provided the video, whether it was Amber, whether it was somebody else. Uh, but for purposes of Johnny's case, it really doesn't matter because the real damage there is in that copyright information and the fact that TMZ had acquired the copyright to the video and handled it accordingly. 
That means Amber Heard was involved. It doesn't matter if she was the one who actually provided the video or not. But then Camille coming back with just that one question redirect to give Morgan Tremaine the stage and let him explain his motivation for why he, he chose to get involved. Um, Elaine had put that into, into question with her 15 minutes of fame line of inquiry. Uh, so it's valid and under the circumstances, I think appropriate question to ask him on redirect to, to let him have the floor and say it his way, how he would want to say it. Um, since Elaine, uh, was essentially trying to foist a narrative upon him that he clearly rejected. So that was it for Morgan Tremaine's testimony. It was pretty short, but it was very powerful. You could see on Amber Heard's face uh, throughout that uh, examination how bothered she was by it with her effort to look completely unbothered altogether. But it was extremely damaging. Um, and all through this indirect method of storytelling by letting the jury reach that final conclusion on their own. Uh, this was a very well strategized and disciplined approach that Camille took to get the most benefit out of the information that Morgan Tremaine had to bring. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the implications of what this could mean for Amber Heard, since it so clearly contradicted her disavowal of any involvement in providing this video to TMZ at all. But from what we learned from Morgan Tremaine, there is simply no way that TMZ would have been able to obtain the copyright to that video without her participation and full knowledge. So we're going to look at what the requirements are in Virginia to pursue a perjury charge against a witness. Uh, but then we're also going to look at potential evidentiary implications, whether it would be possible to really drive that nail home to show that TMZ in fact owned the copyright to that kitchen cabinet video, and therefore had to have acquired it from Amber Heard. And so we're going to take a look at the California reporter's privilege and look at the extent to which that may provide a shield that could be what enables Amber Heard to slip free once again. Join me there.